The Jewish Encyclopedia is an English encyclopedia containing over 15,000 articles on the history, culture, and state of Judaism and the Jews up to the early 20th century. It was originally published in 12 volumes by Funk and Wagnalls of New York City between 1901 and 1906 and reprinted in the 1960s by KTAV Publishing House. The work's scholarship is still highly regarded. The American Jewish Archives has called it the most monumental Jewish scientific work of modern times, and Rabbi Joshua L. Siegel said that, for events prior to 1900, it is considered to offer a level of scholarship superior to either of the more recent Jewish encyclopedias written in English. It is now in the public domain and hosted at various sites around the Internet. The encyclopedia's managing editor was Isidore Singer. The editorial board was chaired by Isaac K. Funk and Frank H. Visitelli. The other editors participating in all 12 volumes were Cyrus Adler, Gothard Deutsch, Richard Gothile, Joseph Jacobs, Kaufman Kohler, Herman Rosenthal, and Crawford Howell Toy. Morris Jastra Jr. and Frederick de Sola Mendes assisted with volumes I and II, Marcus Jastra with volumes I, II, and III, Louis Ginsberg with the first four volumes, Solomon Schechter with volumes IV through VII, Emil G. Hirsch with volumes IV through XII, and Wilhelm Bacher with volumes VIII through XII. William Popper served as the assistant revision editor and chief of translation for vols. IV through XII. Topic history topic topic Singer's idea topic Singer conceived of a Jewish encyclopedia in Europe and proposed creating an Allgemeine Encyclopädie für Geschichte und Wissenschaft des Judentums in 1891. He envisioned 12 volumes, published over 10 or 15 years, and costing $50 as a set. They would contain scientific and unbiased articles on ancient and modern Jewish culture. This proposal received good press coverage and interest from the Brockhaus Publishing Company. However, after the House of Rothschild in Paris, consulted by Zadok Khan, offered to back the project with only 8% of the minimum funds requested by Brockus, the project was abandoned. Following the Dreyfus Affair and associated unpleasantness Singer emigrated to New York City, initially believing that American Jews could do little more than provide funding for his project, Singer was impressed by the level of scholarship in the United States. He wrote a new prospectus, changing the title of his planned encyclopedia to Encyclopedia of the History and Mental Evolution of the Jewish Race. His radical ecumenism and opposition to orthodoxy upset many of his Jewish readers, nevertheless he attracted the interest of publisher Isaac K. Funk, a Lutheran minister who also believed in integrating Judaism and Christianity. Funk agreed to publish the encyclopedia on the condition that it remain unbiased on issues which might seem unfavorable for Jews. Singer accepted and was established in an office at Funk and Wagnalls on 2 May 1898. Publication of the prospectus in 1898 created a severe backlash, including accusations of poor scholarship and of subservience to Christians. Kaufman Kohler and Gothard Deutsch, writing in American Hebrew, highlighted Singer's factual errors, and accused him of commercialism and irreligiosity. Now considering that the project could not succeed with Singer at the helm, Funk and Wagnalls appointed an editorial board to oversee creation of the encyclopedia. Topic editorial board Topic Funk and Wagnalls assembled an editorial board between October 1898 and March 1899. Singer toned down his ideological rhetoric, indicated his desire to collaborate, and changed the work's proposed title to Jewish Encyclopedia. Despite their reservations about Singer, Rabbi Gustav Gothile and Cyrus Adler agreed to join the board, followed by Morris Jastra, then Frederick de Sola Mendes and two published critics of the project, Kaufmann Kohler and Gothard Deutsch. Theologian and Presbyterian minister George Foote Moore was added to the board for balance. Soon after work started, Moore withdrew and was replaced by Baptist minister Crawford Toy. Last was added the elderly Marcus Jastra, mostly for his symbolic imprimatur as America's leading Talmudist. In March 1899 the Central Conference of American Rabbis, which had been contemplating a competing project, agreed to discuss collaborating with Funk and Wagnalls, thus securing the position of the Jewish Encyclopedia as the only major project of its kind. The editors plunged into their enormous task and soon identified and solved some inefficiencies with the project. Article assignments were shuffled around and communication practices were streamlined. Joseph Jacobs was hired as a coordinator, he also wrote 400 articles and procured many of the encyclopedia's illustrations. Hermann Rosenthal, an authority on Russia, was added as an editor. 
Louis Ginsberg joined the project and later became head of the Rabbinical Literature Department. The board naturally faced many difficult editorial questions and disagreements. Singer wanted specific entries for every Jewish community in the world, with detailed information about, for example, the name and dates of the first Jewish settler in Prague. Conflict also arose over what types of Bible interpretation should be included, with some editors fearing that Morris Jaster's involvement in «higher criticism» would lead to unfavorable treatment of scripture. Topic content topic topic Relation to German scholarship topic The scholarly style of the Jewish Encyclopedia is very much in the mode of the Wissenschaft des Judentums Jewish studies, an approach to Jewish scholarship and religion that flourished in 19th century Germany. Indeed, the Encyclopedia may be regarded as the culmination of this movement, which sought to modernize scholarly methods in Jewish research. In the 20th century, the movement's members dispersed to Jewish studies departments in the United States and Israel. The scholarly authorities cited in the encyclopedia, besides the classical and medieval exegetes, are almost uniformly Wissenschaft figures, such as Leopold Zunz, Moritz Steinschneider, Solomon Schechter, Wilhelm Bacher, J. L. Rapoport, David Zvi Hoffmann, Heinrich Grietz, etc. This particular scholarly style can be seen in the Jewish Encyclopedia's almost obsessive attention to manuscript discovery, manuscript editing and publication, manuscript comparison, manuscript dating, and so on. These endeavors were among the foremost interests of Wissenschaft scholarship. The Jewish Encyclopedia is an English language work, but the vast majority of the Encyclopedia's contemporary sources are German language sources, since this was the mother tongue of the Wissenschaft scholars and the lingua franca of biblical scholarship in general in that period. Of the works cited which are not German, usually the more classical works, the large part are either Hebrew or Arabic. The only heavily cited English-language source of contemporary scholarship is Solomon Schechter's publications in the Jewish Quarterly Review. The significance of the work's publication in English rather than German or Hebrew is captured by Harry Wolfson writing in 1926 Schwartz 1965. About 25 years ago, there was no greater desert, as far as Jewish life and learning, than the English-speaking countries, and English of all languages was the least serviceable for such a Jewish work of reference. To contemporary European reviewers of the Jewish Encyclopedia, the undertaking seemed then like an effort wasted on half-clad Zulus in South Africa and Jewish tailors in New York. Those who were then really in need of such a work and could benefit thereby would have been better served if it were put out in Hebrew, German or Russian. The editors and authors of the Jewish Encyclopedia proved prescient in their choice of language, since within that same span of 25 years, English rose to become the dominant language of academic Jewish scholarship and among Jews worldwide. Wolfson continues that, "...if a Jewish encyclopedia in a modern language were planned for the first time i.e., in 1926, the choice would undoubtedly have fallen upon English." Editions Topic Topic Russian Topic the Jewish Encyclopedia was heavily used as a source by the 16-volume Jewish Encyclopedia in Russian, published by Brockhaus and Efron in St. Petersburg between 1906 and 1913. Topic Online Topic. The unedited text of the original can be found at the Jewish Encyclopedia website. The site offers both JPEG facsimiles of the original articles and Unicode transcriptions of all texts. The search capability is somewhat handicapped by the fact that the search mechanism fails to take into account the decision to maintain all diacritical marks in the transliterated Hebrew and Aramaic from the 1901-1906 text, which used a large number of diacriticals not in common use today. Thus, for example, to successfully search for Haliza, the ceremony by which the widow of a brother who has died childless released her brother-in-law from the obligation of marrying her, one would have to know that they have transliterated this as Haliza. The alphabetic index ignores diacriticals so it can be more useful when searching for an article whose title is known. The scholarly apparatus of citation is thorough, but can be a bit daunting to contemporary users. 
Books that might have been widely known among scholars of Judaism at the time the encyclopedia was written but which are quite obscure to a lay reader today are referred to by author and title, but with no publication information and often without indication of the language in which they were written. A list of abbreviations used in the encyclopedia is provided on the Jewish Encyclopedia website. Topic see also topic The Encyclopedia Biblica, from which the Jewish Encyclopedia sometimes quotes verbatim Hastings' Dictionary of the Bible 1898 the shorter Jewish Encyclopedia The Encyclopedia Judaica The Catholic Encyclopedia and Encyclopedia of Islam and Islamica The New Jewish Encyclopedia Lists of Encyclopedias Nahum Goldman Topics from the Jewish Encyclopedia on Wikipedia topic Notes topic topic References topic topic Citations topic topic Bibliography topic Topic the Jewish Encyclopedia, Vol. I, New York, Funk and Wagnalls Co., 1901, LCCN 16014703. The Jewish Encyclopedia, Vol. II, New York, Funk and Wagnalls Co., 1902, LCCN 16014703. The Jewish Encyclopedia, Vol. Three, New York, Funk and Wagnalls Co., 1902, LCCN 16014703. The Jewish Encyclopedia, Vol. IV, New York, Funk and Wagnalls Co., 1903, LCCN 16014703. The Jewish Encyclopedia, Vol. V, New York, Funk and Wagnalls Co., 1903, LCCN 16014703. The Jewish Encyclopedia, Vols. V and 7, New York, Funk and Wagnalls Co., 1904, LCCN 16014703. The Jewish Encyclopedia, Vol. 8, New York, Funk and Wagnalls Co., 1904, LCCN 16014703. The Jewish Encyclopedia, Vols. X, X, and 11, New York, Funk and Wagnalls Co., 1905, LCCN 16014703. The Jewish Encyclopedia, Vols. 12, New York, Funk and Wagnalls Co., 1906, LCCN 16014703. Schwartz, Shuli Rubin. The Emergence of Jewish Scholarship in America, the Publication of the Jewish Encyclopedia. Monographs of the Hebrew Union College, No. 13. Cincinnati, Hebrew Union College Press, 1991. ISBN 0-87820-412-1 Schwartz, Leo W. 1965, a Bibliographical Essay, in Lieberman, Saul, Harry Austrin Wolfson Jubilee Volume on the Occasion of His 75th Birthday, Jerusalem, American Academy for Jewish Research Topic Further reading Topic Topic External links Topic Media related to Jewish Encyclopedia at Wikimedia Commons Complete Encyclopedia Works related to Jewish Encyclopedia at Wikisource Incomplete Encyclopedia JewishEncyclopedia.com See above, maintained by the Kopelman Foundation, multiple copies at the Internet Archive Hathi Trust. Jewish Encyclopedia Full Text